The FBI is losing prestige, or is it getting ready for a nasty move? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. The Federal Bureau of Investigation can't win for losing, it seems. The infamous Trump raid produced a major setback yesterday as a judge subjected it to a scrutiny it cannot withstand. Earlier, they snatched the cell phone of a prominent businessman who has seriously questioned the security of ballot scanner tabulators, a thing I ought to know about because I am an officer of election. Now he's suing and has every expectation of prevailing. Worst of all, we now learn that the FBI had the source of the infamous Steele dossier on its payroll. Now, everyone can readily see that the FBI is a tin pot dictator's secret service and nothing else. But worse, the FBI, unless someone checks it, could become the instrument of a coup d'etat. Whoa! Now that I've got your attention. I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have uh, I've selected for today, which reads, 1984 was not an instruction manual. But you want to know what I think? I think somebody's trying to turn it into one. Though so stick with me to the very end, or I'll show you that the real author of the FBI's playbook was a Roman senator, general officer, and consul 2,000 years ago. Right about at the time of Christ's passion and resurrection, in fact. Now, one more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can even click the bell icon to get a notice the next time I uh, send out another one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do. Now, first, here's the latest on the Trump raid. Yesterday, September 15th, Judge Eileen Cannon of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida ruled in a lawsuit by President Donald Trump over the Trump raid. Trump had asked for a special master. Now he's got one. Better yet, he got one of the candidates he suggested after the FBI virtually conceded that to him. The source for that is Red State, by the way. But more to the point. Judge Cannon refused absolutely to permit the FBI to keep perusing documents on their say-so that national security considerations were inextricably intertwined with their criminal investigation of Trump. And for what? Not returning documents to the National Archives on time? Even if that's true, which Trump does not concede, that's the equivalent of keeping library books past due. The FBI literally wanted the judge to take their word on that after they had violated the court's trust. The judge, having none of it, called them on their perfidy and their carelessness. The reportage on this point comes from Political.com, American Liberty News, Freedom Beacon, and the Patriotic News. The Freedom Beacon article has an interview with a special master from another case who tells what special masters do, and it turns out they really are vice judges. From Politico, we have the three most recent filings. First, we have a 10-page order denying a motion to let the FBI keep perusing the seized documents. Second, Judge Raymond Deary, the appointee, declares that he has no conflict of interest. Third, Judge Cannon formally appoints Judge Derry as special master, and I have left links in the description to all three. Now, technically, the Justice Department had moved to stay an earlier order from Judge Cannon to leave those documents alone pending an appeal, 
Whether that appeal is even viable or not is, is an open question because the Justice Department went ahead with a joint filing with Trump's attorneys after filing a notice of appeal. In any event, the judge refused, saying, and I quote, the court does not find it appropriate to accept the government's conclusions on these important and disputed issues without further review by a neutral third party in an expedited and orderly fashion, close quote. And why not? Why not? Because Trump has disputed the propriety of the seizure and the Justice Department's determination of what does and what does not fall under executive or attorney-client privilege. The judge further said, and again I quote, some of those materials indisputably constitute personal property and or privileged materials. The record suggests ongoing actual and legal disputes as to precisely which materials constitute personal property and or privileged materials and there are documented instances giving rise to concerns about the government's ability to properly categorize and screen materials." Unquote Judge Cannon. Wow! Translation, you need a spanking! Judge Cannon also rejected the inextricable intertwining as not adequately shown. Worse, she accused the FBI flat out of leaking things to the media after the raid. This further order is even more significant. Judge Cannon gave the special master until November 30th, 2022 to make his report. That pushes this off until after midterms. I can just see and hear the weeping and gnashing of teeth at the White House over that one. <laughs> oh boy. The case of Mike Lindell is worse. After all, it comes after the Trump raid and after Judge Cannon dressed the FBI down earlier for its methods. According to CBS News, an FBI team surrounded Mr. Lindell while he was at a Hardee's fast food joint. Uh, sorry, sports fans, but restaurant isn't the word I use to describe a place like that. A restaurant is where you sit down for a civilized meal and some civilized conversation. But I digress. Anyway, those FBI's flashed a warrant at Lindell for his cell phone, which they seized. And from every indication, that warrant, like that for the Trump raid, differed little from a pre-revolutionary writ of assistance. And remember, remember what a writ of assistance is. It is a search anywhere and everywhere for anything and everything warrant. Why did the FBI do this thing? They didn't specifically tell him, but they did ask him some questions about the legal dispute between him and a certain purveyor of ballot scanner tabulators, which shall remain nameless. That act gave Mr. Lindell a cause of action and legal action he has taken, according to WDAY Radio News. Real Clear Politics, moreover, reports that he has hired Alan Dershowitz as lead counsel. I've left a link in the description to a tweet from the Post Millennial carrying an interview with Steve Bannon in which he announces that fact. Well, Hardy's then embarked on a tasteless advertising campaign, capitalizing on the misfortune at one of their franchise holders' establishments. I have a link in the description to a tweet carrying a picture. Now, I have no idea whether this is real or an electronic retouch that is circulating all over the Twitterverse. It shows a hearty sign and someone has spelled out this message, now serving the my pillow guy up to the FBI. Hey, Mr. President of Hardy's, if you can hear me, listen up. I hope that's a retouch. If you manage to catch one of your franchise holders putting up a stupid sign like that, I hope you will announce that that particular franchise is up for sale. The tweet comes from an account by Mr. Adam Parkumenko. Now, if you want to know more, leave a comment and I'll be glad to send you my download of that image. Then you can investigate to figure out whether it's a hoax. Mr. Parkumenko is asking, 
who made this? As if to say, even he's not sure whether that's a retouch or not. Anyway, Mr. Lindell seems to have the last lap. In answer to a tweet that did come from the Hardy's account, there's no mistake about that. That said, it said, and I quote, now that you know we exist, you should try our pillowy biscuits. Mr. Lindell actually created a promotion on his own site. Listen to this. To celebrate, use promo code HARDIES at MyPillow.com for great savings. God almighty, don't you just love that guy? Disclaimer, the MyPillow guy is not my sponsor, not yet, and he did not pay me to pass that along. I'm just reporting what I see. Then Hardy's put on another tweet. If you still have a phone, get a free breakfast biscuit in our app for my rewards members. And then it gives a link. Don't ask me to repeat it here. I've left a link in the description of the tweet. Anyway, a username Petraeus tweeting back said, you should have an FBI promo, a free biscuit invitation. Show your phone for a free biscuit. Now look, Mr. President of Hardee's, that photo I told you about earlier might be real or a retouch, but those two tweets on your company's account are on you. You're the admiral, and this is on your watch. That is the most tasteless thing I have ever seen, and I think it's a crying shame. Enough of that sad business. Now, I need to go on to something even sadder, but first, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the last past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help you shield you help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know how or where to start. Our Silver Lines can help by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting gold, uh, collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities that company provides, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you and build a legacy for your future. Now, I have one more revelation that's the real stunner. Now, you will recall the Trump raid is all about hiding information about Operation Crossfire Hurricane. In that operation, the FBI sought to paint then-candidate Donald Trump as a Russian spy or some such thing. The source of that allegation was a dossier that Agent Christopher Steele of MI6 produced. Yes, that MI6, the same outfit that employed Ian Fleming's iconic character, Commander James Bond, CMG RNVSR, also known as Agent 007. Yeah, cue the iconic theme by Monty Norman or John Barry, whomever. You know what? I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video of that theme. The Hillary Clinton campaign solicited and paid for the Steele dossier. That's a matter of record. We now learn that Christopher Steele's source was on the FBI payroll. Not only that, but the FBI hired him after the election. That comes from just the news. Special Counsel John Durham detailed this in a filing in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia. A Russian businessman named Igor Danchenko is standing trial, or about to stand trial, in that court for lying to the FBI. Durham moved to unseal everything that the government has written down about Danchenko, and a judge granted the motion. I have a link in the description to the judge's order to unseal that material. Now, just the News quotes Durham on the FBI's relationship with Mr. Janchenko. In March 2017, the FBI signed the defendant up as a paid confidential human source of the FBI. The FBI terminated its source relationship with the defendant in October 2020. 
As alleged in further detail below, the defendant lied to FBI agents during several of these interviews. Whiskey, tango, foxtrot, and it gets worse. As has been publicly reported, the defendant was the subject of an FBI counterintelligence investigation from 2009 to 2011. In late 2008, while the defendant was employed by a, a prominent think tank in Washington, D.C., the defendant engaged two fellow employees about whether one of the employees might be willing or able in the future to provide classified information in exchange for money. According to one employee, employee one, the defendant believed that he, employee one, might be in a position to enter the incoming Obama administration and have access to classified information. During this exchange, the defendant informed employee one that he had access to people who would be willing to pay money in exchange for classified information. Employee one passed this information to a U.S. government contact and the information was subsequently passed to the FBI. Based on this information, the FBI initiated a preliminary investigation into the defendant. The FBI converted its investigation into a full investigation after learning that the defendant, one, had been identified as an associate of two FBI counterintelligence subjects, and two, had previous contact with the Russian embassy and known Russian intelligence officers. Unquote. In other words, they knew what kind of man Igor Danchenko was, or at least a search of their own archives could have told present management this interesting fact, and still they hired him. All of which goes to show how the FBI has compromised itself since the initial investigation of Danchenko and probably before. Now, it may or may not be significant that Judge Raymond Deary, who comes from the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York, came to the bench after Ronald Reagan appointed him. It is definitely significant that Judge Deary once served on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. There, he signed off on a warrant against Carter Page, only to find out that the government had had him. Donald Trump's lawyers must have known this when they offered him as a special master candidate. And clearly, the Justice Department missed this key fact when they withdrew their objections to him. Did they think Judge Deary would cooperate with them again, given the Carter Page experience? More likely, Judge Deary knows the lengths to which the government will go in the name of national security. Jonathan Turley tweeted about that, and I have a link to his tweet in the description. Now, you know the saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And Judge Deary likely will not want to let the government fool him again. Now, this morning, we hear that a clerk for the Florida Southern District uh, Court mistakenly docketed a document purporting to offer more information about Donald Trump's handling of classified information. The problem is, that document is a phony, and the Associated Press through Yahoo News openly says that it is. This document alleged that the FBI had two warrants they had not revealed but the warrants are identical to papers that a federal inmate confined to a prison hospital in North Carolina has filed before. This man has a history of mental incompetence to stand trial and for filing frivolous lawsuits. So how did this document get into the docket in the government's case against Trump? That alone smells of a further attempt at manipulation did the AP's reporters not get the memo? Maybe. In any case, the newsletter Royal Patriot reports that Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri is ready to investigate the FBI if Republicans secured control of the Senate this midterms. In fact, 
he calls for removing Attorney General Merrick Garland on impeachment for and conviction of willfully misleading the Congress as to the activities of his department and its agencies and exceeding his lawful authority as Attorney General and the authority of his department. I have one more question in closing. To what or to whom shall we now compare the FBI? It's easy to compare the FBI to various dictators, police agencies from the last century, although most people making such comparisons leave out one. The Okrana, the Imperial Secret Police under Tsar Alexander III. Little good did Alexander's secret police do him. <laughs> they couldn't keep him alive. But the best comparison, like the one for Biden's infamous red backdrop speech, comes from 2,000 years ago. Lucius Elias Sejanus, after winning the confidence of Emperor Tiberius, turned the Praetorian Guard, Augustus' original bodyguard force, into the first secret police. If Augustus founded the forerunner of the CIA, then Sejanus made the forerunner of the FBI what it was. Sejanus gathered dossiers on political enemies and arranged for their arrest. And sometimes they're... Mm, uh, you get the idea. It may or may not be significant that Sejanus made Pontius Pilate prefect of Drugia. Yes, that Pilate! In any case, the present FBI is behaving like the Praetorian Guard while Sejanus commanded it. But there's another parallel. President Biden is just like Tiberius. He's an old man leaving the administration of government to others. Now, given our constitutional system, no FBI director could hope to vault to the headship of state as Sejanus tried to do. Or could he? Who is really calling the shots at the White House? We don't know, but these ominous parallels in personality and behavior to a situation 2,000 years ago should give us pause. Link in the description of the article, to the three most recent court filings in Trump versus USA, to the interview with Steve Bannon announcing that Mike Lindell has hired Alan Dershowitz, to that awful picture that I hope is a retouch of a Hardy sign to two tweets detailing Hardy's ad campaign and the reaction to it, to the James Bond theme, to the order to, uh, order to unseal in the Danchenko case, to Jonathan Turley on Raymond Deary not likely to let the government fool him again, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to OurCivilized.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to link, like, how to like a video, Turn on notifications and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link and a link to the James Bond theme, to that speech, and to every, a playlist of everything I have thus far on the Trump raid. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.